feeling, Joshua? Better than I was. But not nearly as well as you should be. Your cuts and burns may have healed, but your body still bears the burden of every spell cast. Then what would you have had me do? It was no ordinary foe we faced. It was the Warden of Darkness. Yet still, it was not enough. The King could have ended me at any moment, but instead chose to toy with me like a curl does a mouse. Yeah. You underestimate yourself. Oh, it was crystal clear. Only one man established his dominance that day, and that man was Barnabas. I'm sorry, brother. That was ill-spoken. It's just... I have never felt so powerless. And when so many are looking to us for strength, perhaps... No, perhaps the prince feels the same. this place <gasps> don't move It's fresh from the well. Grandmother told me spirits sometimes get lost, and that the lanterns guide them to their proper place. I set one on the river for her when she passed away. Was it you who guided my hand then, Ultima? No, not you. This is my doing, my fault, my sin to bear. And for it, I must atone. Your hurts are healing nicely. It was my poultices that saw you well. You make them. And sell them, or try to. Earns me enough for bread, most days. Forgive me. I have nothing to... I know, but I couldn't just leave you lying there. <sighs> You're going then. Of course. 
I'm healed. Thanks to you and your poultices. Will you promise to come back and visit? Phoenix, it would seem that I owe you my wings. Perhaps he can find an answer. You will be returning to Walud soon, I gather. I see no reason to wait. Then neither do I. I can think of a few, but I doubt they'll stop you. You will take your medicine. Of course, Lady Tyre. Set on leaving already, are you? How long will it take us to get back to Ash? Dunno, about the same amount of time it took us to get here. Maybe less, if your uncle can find someone trustworthy to patch up the Enterprise. All depends on where we're putting into port, mind. Yes, it's not as if we can put ashore wherever we choose. We have to assume that the whole of Ash is hostile, and that we'll be attacked on sight. Then we must find a place they won't think to look. And I have an idea who might know of one. The Professor! I'll go and tell you come in! While you're plotting our course, I'll be in the shelves with your lawsmen. I wish to pick his brains about Ultima. Then I'll talk to Karen about supplies for the journey. They may not be easy to come by in Ash. Your brother's body won't take much more of this recklessness. You know that, don't you? I do. I was wondering when you'd arrive. Please tell me you've come to take our young prodigy here off my hands. I'm not here for Mid. I need information on Ash. Then why not ask Molly if you can look in one of her ovens? <sighs> Go on. As soon as the Enterprise is ready, we'll be setting out for Drake's spine. And we're going to need a safe place to land. Preferably one that won't see my ship blown to shit and splinters. If it were that easy, do you think Walud would have resisted invasion for so long? Very little is known of Ash, and the information we do have is spotty and outdated. We have the good King Barnabas to thank for that. Walud's borders have been closed to outsiders since the day he seized the throne. If there is anywhere safe to land, you won't find it on my map. And tell us what we will find. I'm sure you know better than we do. But no splinters! All right, all right, if it will get you out of my hair. But interrupt me, and it's over. Understood? Barnabas Tharm, the one they call the Last King. Understand him, and you will understand the kingdom of Walud. Barnabas was only a boy when he arrived from beyond the southern seas, and barely a man before he united the ragged tribes of Ash. And having unleashed them upon the formidable Veldemark, he set his throne upon the ancient kingdom's ruins. The victory sent shockwaves around Valisthea, Tales of Odin's might spreading through every court, parlor, and drinking hall in the realm. Note that this was in the year 843, and that the king still sits upon his throne some 40 years later, quite untouched by time. 
Walud's recent inaction left many wondering if Odin had lost his appetite for war. And yet here we are. The Einherjar was committed to the fray. A bold declaration of intent. Orcs swarm around Drake's Fang, and throngs of Akashic haunt canvas streets. Though how precisely the havoc they wreak serves Walud remains unclear. Regardless, if the order to attack truly came from King Barnabas, then one thing is certain. Walud has achieved the impossible and made bedfellows of beast men and the ether adult alike. All of which is a roundabout way of saying that you will be in unknown territory when you set foot on Ash. Much of the continent has already been lost to the Blight, and what few ports remain will be fiercely guarded. And that is to say naught of its natural defenses. Offshore currents will cast an ill-equipped ship out to sea one moment, and dash it against the rocks the next. But then the Enterprise is anything but ill-equipped. And Mid has made land there before. Now, if only there were someone with an intimate knowledge of the Shadow Coast, and where a daring gentleman might put ashore. You see, Clive? You had the answer all along. Do you think you can get us back to that beach, Mid? Picked you up from it, didn't I? Not that it were easy. The currents were right, bastard. But then, if it wasn't hard, it wouldn't be worth doing, would it? Well said. Thank you, Lady Vivian. If a few morsels of common knowledge and a sprinkling of tavern talk are worthy of your thanks, I wonder what genuine intelligence might earn me. Probably more visits. Mid, I need everyone in the ale hall now. I'll fetch Joshua from the shelves. Aye, aye, Captain. Heard the bad news then, did you? What bad news? About Dravosht. Blackthorn's old haunt. With the forge and all that. Well, anyway, the mines... And the village? Safe from the flood for now, but they've got other problems. Akashic. Every creature in the area is either turned, or on the way to turning, apparently. Zoltan and the others are living on borrowed time. They need help, and quick. Doris sent a few curse breakers to keep an eye on things, but there's only so much a couple of scouts can do. Except get eaten. If something ain't done soon, the old place will be overrun. I won't let that happen. Didn't think you would. Does Blackthorn know? I thought it might be better if he didn't. He'd only do something stupid. You reckon we should tell him? No. It's better this way. Yeah, well... I can't stand about knowing what's happening out there, so I'm off. I'll see you in Dravosht. My Lord Marquis. Yote, is anything the matter? You seem troubled. Perhaps I might be able to help. My Lord. Y yes. Perhaps you might. It's your brother. His condition continues to worsen, though he does his best to hide it. The lesion on his chest pains him more with each passing day. I had feared as much. There are certain elixirs which can ease the suffering of those afflicted by the curse, but... But? But His Grace's case is severe. The drafts I have been able to prepare for him thus far have ceased to have any real effect. So I consulted with Talia and certain of my comrades among the Undying about the possibility of finding something stronger. 
and thankfully a recipe was found. The only problem being that the critical ingredient is exceptionally hard to come by, and our supplies are almost exhausted. Unless we can secure more soon, your brother's anguish will likely become unbearable. My lord, I know that I have no right to make demands of you. But would you help? For Joshua's sake. For Joshua? Anything? Thank you, my lord. So, what is this critical ingredient? A rare herb by the name of Stonerwort. It grows only where the ether is densest. The vigor it stores in its stems helps to counteract the curse. We discovered a patch near the aqueduct in Rosaria. But alas, yet more ether has erupted from the earth there recently, leaving the whole area flooded. The search continues for a new source, one that we might reach without being turned. So it's only that you can't reach it? The stone and water itself is unharmed by the flood. Well, yes, but... Then I shall go in your stead. Oh, but, my lord... You've yet to find another source, correct? So for now, the aqueduct is our best hope. Besides, I'm a dominant. The ether can't hurt me. Well, if you're sure, my lord. Stonerwort is easily identified by its blood-red blooms. Search around the aqueduct, and you're sure to find some soon enough. I shall remain here and prepare the other ingredients. hoping to see. D did you have a mo? Don't tell me. You need more bomb ash. Oh no. We still got plenty of that left. I'm working on bringing another one of the chief's designs to life. This time, it's a new smelter. It's got a reverberatory hood over the top for additional thermo amplification and a system of reciprocal recirculatory regenerators that, that, um, Let's just say it gets very blimmin' hot. A heck of a lot hotter than anything Blackthorn's got in his forge, that's for certain. Only Mithril engines get hotter, and you can't chuck ore in one of them and get met like the other end. <laughs> Trouble is, we won't be able to make out of any old rubbish, neither. We need the good stuff. And I hear you once helped Helena get her hands on exactly that. Any chance you could help me too? If it's for the good of the hideaway, I'd be happy to. Oh, it is. I promise you. So, what exactly is this good stuff you need me to find? We've got a couple of examples here. Spherical echoes, we call them. More fallen materials. So this smelter is similar to the Mithril engine in more ways than one. That's right. They're a bit like the Thermal Helms. Fallen ceramics deal with heat like nothing else, see? And what's more, they're directional, transferring heat from the inside to the outside. But these things, they're all outside. If we line the hub with them, they'll reflect the heat right back into the furnace. We've collected as many as we can, and I know where we can get the rest. They're all watched over by their bigger, uglier cousins. So you want me to visit some ruins, destroy some echoes, and bring back the spheres they're guarding? 
that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. We're only three short, mind. And we know exactly where they are. There's one up Amber Way, in that ruin that they call Lost Plume, and another in the Silent South over in Dalmechia. Last one is in the ruins of Advent, which is in the Empire. All right then. Wish me luck. It'll do. I'll be keeping all my fingers and toes crossed. How was she? The Enterprise, I mean. Miss, can we read Miss Editor's story for our lesson today? What a wonderful idea, Jocelyn. Can the loss? just that. Molly's lemon tarts. I've never had anything so delicious. I sure is lucky. What do I owe the honor? What's that for you, dear? That it? <clears throat> Fine. Oh, no, stupid these days. There's no way of knowing if Doris will confide in me, but I can speak to her at least. I have no reason to assume otherwise. Clive, you must listen to this. Rosman, tell him. Do you recall when we spoke before on the divinity of Ultima? Well, it inspired me to delve deeper into the subject. And what I discovered appears to agree with the findings of His Grace. You will recall that my quest to uncover Ultima's origins began with the mural at Phoenix Gate. But while I've always known it to be important, its secrets have heretofore eluded me. Now, however, I believe I know where to find the more complete example, one that will reveal all we seek. Master Clive, have you ever in your travels chanced to hear of the Circle of Malleus? I would think not, if you have. But there was once a time when the faith flourished, the oldest known religion in the Twins, and though its popularity eventually waned on storm, hints of its dogma remain embedded in more modern faiths such as the crystalline orthodox. Wait, you said it waned on storm. What of ash? Religious monuments are often torn down or repurposed when new faiths rise to prominence. But if no new faith arose, then perhaps the ancient temples might still stand. And so, you see now why I must accompany you to Walud. It would appear the past still has much to teach us. Though in this case, it would not have been possible without the musings of Moss. <laughs> to think that you carried a copy of my old mentor's chronicles all along. I am relieved to discover it in good hands. I shall guard it with my life. Joshua, if you're finished here, join me in the ale hall. I need to speak to everyone before we leave. Right away.
If it please your grace, might I one day borrow the chronicles for a short while? Of course, Lordsman Hippocrates. You need but ask. Meg said I can ride the Enterprise next. No, she doesn't. My apologies. By now you've all heard where we're going and why. So I won't bother you with the boring details, only the important ones. If we attempt to approach Stone here by sea, there's a good chance we'll be sighted and fall prey to the capital's artillery. So instead, we'll disembark on the southwest coast and make for Drake's spine on foot. I say we, but... It's highly likely the entirety of Ash is under the rule of Ultima. A large party would only attract unwanted attention. As well as slow our march, and require supplies which may be difficult to obtain. Only Joshua and I will be going. And a scout. Preferably a good one. Gav, do you know of any? You bet your ass I do. Might still borrow some of Lady Vivian's maps, though. Just in case, like. Once you've dropped us off at the Shadow Coast, you need to retreat into neutral waters, fly merchant colors, and stay inconspicuous. If you sense any danger at all, you leave us behind and return to Storm. Inconspicuous is my middle name. But like hell am I leaving anyone behind. The ship ain't going nowhere till your scurvy mugs are smiling on deck. Jill. The Enterprise will appear a tempting target for Royalists and Pirates alike. You're to stop anyone boarding. Don't worry. I'll keep the ship and her crew safe. You'll be needing passage home, after all. But... Very well. If there are no questions, I'll see you all at the docks. Let me know when you're leaving. I want a word before you go. Of course. Covered in nicks and lumps, the lot of them. It's a wonder they can still walk. You said. I'm looking for Doris. Is she here? I'm afraid not. She's at Martha's rest on a job. My job, actually. When she heard what the mission was, she insisted on going herself. Alone. Did she? What was the mission? Following up on some new information. Once they'd settled in, the bearers you helped liberate in the Dragon's Airy were keen to talk about their imprisonment. And about their captor. The slaver Cole's team were tracking when they were attacked by the beastmen. I'll go and find her. She's at Martha's rest, you say? If she's not moved on already, yes. I hope everything's all right. Why would Doris insist on going alone? Maybe Cole was right to be worried. Something wrong. Not at all. Honestly. Can't a man wish his friend farewell? Just wanted to let you know that I'll keep things in order while you're off saving the world. I'll hold you to that.
Reckon it'll be a long walk to the capital if we follow the cliffs. I'll scout ahead. See if I can't find us an inland route. Clive. Hmm. There's something I've been meaning to ask. You took her icon, didn't you? Yes, I did. She understood. Oh, oh she understood. Understood that you decided to save the world all on your own, and that you'd die without her power. How dare you make her choose? You knew damn well she'd never refuse you. But I will. You can't keep pushing us away, Clive. The world is ours to save, not yours. I used my gift because I thought it was the right thing to do. And you truly believe this will save you? Will save us all? I do. Then so be it. Just don't forget, you're not alone. <sighs> Think I found us a trail. Uh, did I miss something? Only that Joshua didn't. I don't get it. Always wanted to visit Ash. We're in Waluda territory now. Don't expect a warm welcome. Oh, I don't know, Clive. Dravosht is still standing. For now, at least. Clive! You're here! And the Akashic? Mostly off to the north still. But I spoke to Doris's scouts, and it turns out things are worse than I thought. There's swarms of them out there. Told old Snotty to be ready to seal the north gate. That should buy us some time if we need it. Enough for the villagers to barricade themselves inside their homes, at least. Well done. Welcome back. Sid. I'd never have guessed, you know. Not if August hadn't let slip. Who'd have thought that the savior of Drabozd 
would turn out to be the realm's most infamous outlaw. Keen to help us out again? I am. Thought you could sneak off without me, did you? Blackthorn. Oh, what are you doing here? One of the scouts couldn't keep his voice down. Unlike my best mate who didn't think I deserved to know. So then, how long's it been? Long enough for us two to turn into a pair of old codgers, I see. Then your idea of an apology? Prick. Don't listen to him. You only did what you thought was best. For the village and that. I did, yeah. But that ain't the whole of it. Vulcan, our master, didn't leave the chieftain to the two of us. He left it to me. The best blacksmith in Travosht, barring himself, of course. <sighs> Bloody stupid tradition, in my opinion. If someone's got talent, you should let them practice their craft, not ask them to settle petty feuds and barter for grain. Our master wasted half his life that way. I wasn't about to let that happen to me. So you're wasting half of mine instead? You're what Dravos needed. Under me and my precious ideals, this place wouldn't have lasted a year. So I left to devote myself to the work and spare you lot the consequences. I may be a selfish prick, but I only did what I felt I had to. What you had to do was your duty! Even if it meant we all starved? Enough. This is no time for bickering. You can finish beating each other up once Dravos is safe. Fine. I've said my piece anyway. Yeah. So have I. Sorry, Clive. I shouldn't have stuck my nose in. Short enough on time as it is. Still, give us a mo, would you? I need to get my head straight before any of them Akashic try to bite it off. You, uh... We can't afford to waste any more time. Right you are. Might be worth having one last word with the scouts, though. Don't want any nasty surprises, do we? Oh, and... Blackford? Akashic on the moon. How close are they? Within sight of the walls. And there are more coming up from the mines. Uh, what was I saying about nasty surprises? The wash right over... Good idea. Understood. I'm prepared to fight if I have to. Well, let's hope you don't. That's our job. Once the scouts are inside, order your men to barricade the gates. No heroic last stands, you hear me? No fighting at all if you can help it. August's right. I've seen what Akashic beasts can do to armor. The people here are tough and willing, but they ain't equipped to face what's coming. I'm going out there. Start work on the gate as soon as I've left. I'll give you as much time as I can. And if they kill you? You evacuate. But it won't come to that. I promise. <laughs> You'd better be right. Take good care of Dravosh till I get back. Leave it to me. And... Give those things what for, yeah?
certainly not. The question is, did I miss any? Man alive! You're still in one piece! I slow as many as I could. <laughs> as many as I could, he says. The old bleeding lot more like it. Well, almost. Only almost. Yeah, one or two did try to sneak over the wall. But we got the bastards, don't you worry. Good. Though you do know, more will come in time. In time, yeah. But we can think about them later. Let's get you back inside.
Sid. <laughs> You're even more fearsome than your reputation. <laughs> Enough to give those Akashic monsters nightmares. I almost felt sorry for the wretched things. But mostly, I felt grateful. Dravos won't forget what you did today. I'm afraid I've only delayed the inevitable. There's no getting rid of that ether flood. Meaning that any living thing which stumbles into those mines will end up clawing at your walls again. And that's if the flood don't spread. If it does, well, I hate to say it, but the village's days are numbered. That may be, but we're staying just the same. With ether floods springing up all over, it's no less safe than anywhere, and more importantly, it's our home. We'll fortify the gates to the north, and I'll see that they're guarded day and night. All right. Then we'll give you a hand shoring up those defenses. As for you, Blackthorn, that's twice you've turned up when Dravosh needed you. So... Thanks. I shouldn't have stayed away so long. And I shouldn't have left without talking it over with you first. <laughs> Too bloody right you shouldn't. Though I doubt I'd have listened. I always... envied you. How you made everything look so easy when, for me, it was anything but. You leaving gave me the perfect excuse to hate you. <laughs> and from that day on, I never once stopped to wonder what it would have been like if you'd stayed. But what you said earlier... It was true. You'd have been the death of this place. Finally. Something we can agree on. I hope you see the sense of it eventually. You kept this place alive. Alive, perhaps. Wealthy even, but... Dravoj isn't what it once was. Our work used to be the pride of Dalmechia. Now, we churn out the same rubbish day after day because it's easy and turns a profit. It's not about the craft anymore. <laughs> I wouldn't send my sons to war wearing the shit most of our smiths are making. I've kept working, honing my skills, trying to lead by example, but no one sees the point. The average castle apprentice has as much passion for the craft as our current lot. Come back to us, Blackthorn. Remind Dravosht what a true master blacksmith looks like. <laughs> I'll even man those bellows of yours if it means we can work at the same forge again. That's a kind offer. Kinder than I deserve. And I wish I could accept, but I'm needed elsewhere. There's people who trust their lives to my steel. And I dare let him down. Uh, fair enough. But that doesn't mean I couldn't visit from time to time. Let's see if we can't rekindle this town's passion for the craft, shall we? I'd like that. Just be sure to tell Snotty to let me in the next time I come calling, yeah? <laughs> Knowing him, he'd let you in anyway. Blackthorn. The Master Smith turned outlaw. Back in my good graces. I never thought I'd see the day. I'd say that went pretty well, wouldn't you? Even better than I'd hoped. Sid, I've got something for you. And this is? A token of our lasting gratitude. But I'm of a mind to make you a far grander gift. Designs for a certain sword have been passed down from chief to chief for generations. Now hold on, Sultan. There's a reason no one's made that blade in centuries. There's not been a craftsman equal to the task. I'll admit your cinders make impressive steel. And I've learned to own an edge Odin will be proud of. But the engravings on that thing are enough to make a jeweler cry. And they're not just for show, either. Have you forgotten what brought you back to Dravost in the first place? Hmm? A certain ring? I knew I'd never surpass you with a hammer and tongs. So I turned my hand to a different kind of metalwork. Between the two of us, 
I'd say we're the equal of any master craftsman ever to have graced a forge. <laughs> You know what? I think you might be right. Clive, you wouldn't mind if Zoltan came back to the Idaway, would you? <laughs> He's more than welcome. As long as he can keep our secret. Right. Zoltan, get your tools. We've got a legend to forge. Ambrosia won't help me here. Run like the wind. one's first. You deserve a rest. This is it. Right then. Live! To what do I owe the pleasure? I just wanted to see how the town's been faring since you brought everyone together. Uh, since we brought everyone together? All is absolutely wonderful. Conrad and Natalie's hands remain safely away from each other's throats and firmly at the helm. Our stores are full and the bandits still too disorganized to raid them. Just as the good Lady Jane and Lord Underhill intended. Are you a lord? Lubor's going to be one too. They're going to make him the Lord of Dalamil. Because of how he stopped all the grown-ups from fighting. It's the Mayor of Dalamil, dear child. And the vote hasn't taken place just yet. But if the people wish me to lead them, I shall. And my first act will be to build a school so that menaces like you two learn not to interrupt your elders. Speaking of menaces, there may be a rather worrying one just over the horizon. 
May there indeed. I'm afraid the example Conrad and Natalie set in putting aside their differences in presenting a united front might have caught the bandits' attention. And they might have elected to take a similar approach. They have formed what one could call a League of Outlaws. And they grow more organized by the day. We'll fight them all off just like last time. No matter how many of them there are. Won't we, Lubor? Of course we will. If we continue to work together, we can overcome any challenge we choose to face. The longer we avoid facing this one, the more difficult it will be. Until the only way to overcome it might be to run for the hills. Our best hope is to nip these efforts at organization in the bud. By finding those ne'er-do-wells who have yet to join the cause, and ensuring that they never do. Perhaps a certain Lord Underhill might be willing to lend us his aid once more? How could I refuse? <laughs> Thank you, my lord. Victor will fill you in on the particulars. I have him stationed by the Desert Gate, receiving and collating reports from my scouts. Such an amenable soul. He reminds me of you. I'll go and speak with him. What's the difference between a lord and a mayor? That's easy. A league of outlaws. Sounds like we have some competition. Still in Dalamil, Victor. Ah, Sid. I thought you'd have returned to Kostnis by now. I did. Then I came back. I've developed something of a fondness for the place. And having worked so hard to see it saved from one fate, it would seem remiss to abandon it to another. A sentiment Master Lubor certainly isn't shy about exploiting. Hence my doing his bidding yet again. You're not the only one. What does he want you to do? He asked for my aid in putting down the bandits. And he said that you might be able to help me find them. Then you've come at just the right time. I was on my way to speak with Conrad about how to organize our forces. There are more camps in the vicinity than we can safely strike at once. But we must strike together, and we must strike soon at as many camps as we can. We can't give this League of theirs time to rally its forces. All right. Which camp shall I take? There's one upriver. Just out there, across the dunes. Leave it with me. Those ne'er do wells want to plan. Must be the camp Victor mentioned. We make this quick. That's him! The one who killed Locke and Fingers! Oh, my God. 
I better let Victor know. Sid, where are you? Ah, I see the bandits didn't pose you any trouble. No, but that's not why you're here, is it? No. Something's happened. We need you back in Dalimil. What is it? The whole town's in uproar. They're saying that Lubor is a bearer. What? Seems that one of our parties wasn't as thorough as they should have been. They let one of the bandits escape, and his escape route took him right through Dalamo. Some of the children spotted him, and he was about to silence them. And when Lubor felled him with a bolt of magic, and without a crystal. But that's not possible. It is, if he's a bearer and has been hiding it all these years. If he has, well, I wouldn't blame him. No man is branded by choice. Still, all those people see is a man who's lied to them all his life. One who has made a leader of himself when the world believed he should have been a slave. Fuck. I don't know where we go from here, but I know one thing. Lubor needs all the friends he can get right now. You're right. And now everyone knows. <laughs> I made it a habit to keep a crystal close at hand for just such an occasion. And when that occasion arose, I forgot to reach for it. <laughs> well, it was bound to come out sooner or later. We're sorry, Lubo. We tried to keep running, but we just couldn't anymore. There's nothing to be sorry for. I rather enjoyed playing the hero for once. All that matters to me is that you two are safe. Look at him talking to his betters like it's nothing. All lies are wager, just like the ones he fed us all these years. Once people make up their minds, it's hard to change them. We need to do something, and quickly. Convince the people not to let their prejudices blind them. Convince them that nothing has changed that their enemy lies outside these walls, not within them. You're right. We should speak to everyone. I'm glad you agree. I'll handle the townsfolk. I'm a downright born and bred. They listen to me. You head to the tavern. Make Conrad and Natalie remember who Lubor really is. They know that Lubor and I are friends. I might not make for the most impartial of interlocutors. Lord Underhill of Randalar's League of Merchants, however, is a trusted and impartial mediator of note. I'll do what I can. Lubor, stay here with the children. I can't promise anything, but... we'll try. And that is all I can ask of you. Taking the bearer's side. Why do they always have to make such a fuss outside? It's driving away our customers. He knew all along that he was playing us for fools. And we fell. Forgive me for disturbing you, but could I have a moment of your time? Hmm. I've seen your face before. As have I, Lord Underhill, wasn't it? ...of the League of Merchants. Uh, that's right. I wanted to speak to you about Lubor. The rumors that he's a bearer. All true, I'm afraid. He'll never be mayor now. Not if I have anything to do with it. 
But what if his wares? Bearer or no, his steel is highly valued throughout the Republic. In this, at least, he's done the town a service. Might that not earn him a little leniency? Leniency? He pretended to be one of us when he was laughing behind our backs all the while. I'm sorry, my lord, but he lied to us. He lied to you. He cannot be trusted. So what do you propose? Will you drive him from his home? Close his forge? Perhaps. That is a question for the people of Dalimil. And they will thank you not to get involved. The townsfolk have made their minds up. There was nothing I could do. Nor I. Conrad and Natalie refused to consider anything but their own wounded pride. You never know. Once their anger is cooled, they might see things differently. For now, we should report back to Lumbor. All right. Why the hell would Victor take the bearers? I assume the situation is hopeless. There's still hope. But... But, perhaps not in this lifetime, I think it's fair to say. You mustn't think like that, Lubor. Give them time. They'll come around. We'll talk some sense into them in the end, you'll see. No, you won't. And your efforts would be better spent elsewhere. But Lubor... Rosina would often tell me... That steel does not lie. That a blade is a reflection of the smith who forged it. To yourself be true. That was her point. Rather an ironic one when you consider that her life was taken with a blade of her own making. But I do not doubt that she was always true to herself and what she believed in right to the end. And so must I be. I must do what I know to be right no matter what others might think of me. And now, I know what that is. I must embrace my new role of villain so that the people of Dalamil have something to unite against. For only united can they hope to stand against the threat that awaits them. I'll need to make a suitably dramatic exit, of course. Don't go, Lubor. You're the only one who was ever kind to us. We'll be all alone. Again. Trust me, little ones. It is for the best that I go. Not only for the town, but for you, too. How could it possibly be for the best? These children need you. The least you can do is give the townspeople a chance to change their minds. They would not take it, Victor. It's over. Over, you say? And so just like that, you're going to throw this town and these children to the wolves? I thought you were better than this. But it seems you had me fooled as well. Victor. Forget it. Do what you will. You sure you're making the right choice, Lubor? Of those available to me, I believe it's the best one. Yes. Ah, but where are my manners? Here. A reward for clearing out that bandit camp. Right then. I have packing to do. If there's anything I can do. Anything. I'll bear it in mind. Thank you.
Ready, go. Fly Ambrosia. Don't get surrounded.
want to go. safe.
That's all of them. A wine can uncross his toes now. Dominion's all but done for. That's what I heard. Then it's lucky we stayed here. that shouting I heard from the barrack? Just gonna fall into line. What else can I do? I don't trust this duke. If we're not careful, he'll undo all the dame's hard work. Oh, Clive. What am I to do? My wards and I may soon be without a home. What's happened? The High Cardinal has descended from his lofty throne and taken up residence here in Northreach. The High Cardinal? Leader of the Council of Elders. Second only to his radiance at the head of the Imperial government. Not that any of those things still exist. Now he goes by his noble title. The Duke of Oriflam. And what does he want with Northridge? He wants to transform it into a military stronghold. A foundation upon which to build a new Sambrek. He's already secured the support of the various army remnants with promises that they shall be afforded the respect they deserve in his empire. One built on the confiscated property of the people. He would rob the populace to pay for it. Believe me, I have used every means of persuasion to discourage him from this folly. But for whatever reason, he will not listen to me. What does Captain Philippe make of this? When the town was under attack, it was him the soldiers rallied around. Couldn't he use that influence again? How? By speaking out against one of the most powerful men in Sambrek. A man whose stated aim is to revive the Empire Philippe's comrades swore to serve, and to improve the soldier's lot within it. The captain can offer them a regular supply of gruel, and an occasional trip to the Vale to help them forget the terrors they face each day. The Duke offers them a vision of strength and safety. No. Any attempt to incite mutiny would cost Philippe the support of his men. If it did not cost him his life. But given the mood around town, mutiny may yet be unavoidable. The people have little appetite for further deprivation. Least of all when it serves only to elevate others. And who could blame them? Clive, would you... Appeal to the Duke on my behalf for your services to Northreach. You have the respect of the soldiers, and they will take you to his eminence if you ask them. And unlike Philippe, no bonds of loyalty prevent you from speaking your mind to the man. Well, will you try? You could hardly fare any worse than I did. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Clive. Tell me then, where will I find this Duke of Oriflam? In the garrison? Overseeing the troops, yes. All right. Wish me luck. This Duke have been at the Remembrance Ceremony. Let's hope we didn't make a strong impression.
Oh, sorry about that. You're the dame's man, aren't you? You got some business with the captain? No, actually. With the Duke. I was hoping I might be able to speak with him. We're under orders not to let any civilians pass. But you should be all right. His eminence has heard all about you and your heroics. Wait here. I'll go and ask. So, you are the sellsword who lent his aid to the garrison. The Empire owes you a debt, and I shall see it repaid. But tell me, is it wealth that you seek or favor? Neither, Your Eminence. I thought only to inquire about your plan to turn Northreach into a stronghold. Ah, I see. You are worried the expanded garrison will render your services redundant. Yet you needn't be. A proud fighting man like yourself shall always have a place here. Pride of place, in fact. For too long has the contribution of the noble soldier been underreckoned. But no more. For it is they who shall see the Holy Empire rebuilt, beginning right here in Northreach. Why here, Your Eminence? The town has been fortunate enough to escape largely unscathed from the recent troubles. Her defenses are sound and her garrison well prepared. Which is more than can be said for Oriflam or Twinside. The Empire wants for a capital, and I believe Northreach to be the perfect place. With Cairn Norvant as her citadel. Once we have seen to the refortification of both the town and the castle, we need only build a wall around both to create a city that would be the envy of the twins. Plans are already underway for the construction. Soon enough, these thralls shall learn that they are no match for the might of Sandbrek. I fear you underestimate how dangerous these creatures are, Your Eminence. Should they return in force, you will need all the people of Northreach to come together in defense of the town. Something they may be loath to do if they've been deprived of their worldly goods. The people will do as their leaders command. If Sandbrek is to be rebuilt, she will require a functioning government. One whose authority is beyond question. That is why this levy is necessary. So that any man who wishes to join the army might do so and be fed, outfitted and paid as befits a defender of the Empire. <laughs> and yet there are those who persist in peddling the treasonous lie that I seek to steal from the people and drive them from their homes. I suspect they're afraid of losing what little they have left. Precisely. The common folk have little and less, and you mean to deprive them of even that. You would sow the seeds of your new empire in your own salted earth. Sabine, we have discussed this. Yes, and I told you then how putting the Empire before her citizens would lead only to revolt. Without an Empire, there are no citizens. And in yours, there will be only beggars. Is that what Griga wills for her people? Do not take her name in vain, Sabine. I'll come back later. A citizen's revolt. I wonder what the people really think of the Duke's plan. It wouldn't hurt to ask them, I suppose. Let's begin with those on the other side of the wall. Sabine! You... Embarrassing me! <laughs>
You think he was the only one who survived? That so-called duke is asking too much. All right, there. What is it you're after, sir? Just your opinion, actually. I wondered what you thought of the Duke of Oriflam. <laughs> oh, him. Not much. None of us traders do. It's thanks to nobles like him that we had to set up shop this side of the wall in the first place. Couldn't have the rabble getting any closer to the holy capital, could they? And now he's trying to drive us out completely, threatening to take everything we got from us if we don't clear off. If the dame said she wanted him run out of town, I'll be straight through that checkpoint tar bucket in hand. Question, if you don't mind. What do you think of the Duke of Oriflam? Mm, don't get me started. You build a life for yourself somewhere, earning for some noble to turn up and tell you you've got to hand it all over to him. If he thinks his name and his chains give him the right to empty our purses, he's in for a rude awakening. We'll do whatever it takes to keep what's ours. Whatever it takes. Anything today? As much as you, I'll wager. I've been hearing a lot of talk about a certain duke. Nothing good, I'll wager. Going around acting like he owns the place. And with hardly a word to the dame. This is her town, not his. I take it you'd rather she was in charge. As far as I'm concerned, she still is. Just need his eminence to sod off back to Oriflam. Well, the people seem united enough. What about the soldiers? gonna fall in tonight. What else can I do? Excuse me, do you have a moment? I wondered if you'd mind sharing your thoughts on the Duke of Oriflam. Well, <laughs> he's made a lot of enemies coming in the way he did. But I mean, look around us. You can see the state the realm's in. The traders might not like having the screws put on them, but if they volunteered a few more of their hard-earned gill before things got bad, Maybe they wouldn't have to. I think the Duke's got a point when he says rebuilding the Empire is the best way of making sure we're all protected. And if that means people who don't know one end of a sword from another have to make way for those who do, well, that's just how it goes. the only one who survived. One at a time now. 
you. You're the one who was talking to his eminence. On the dame's behalf, yes. I was trying to persuade him not to take the people's goodwill for granted, but... It seems my words fell on deaf ears. What do you think of his plans? I'm a soldier, mate. He tells me what to do, not the other way round. Listen, I've got nothing but respect for the dame. But I've got a family to look after. That's where my loyalties lie. Not with the town or the empire, but with my wife and children. If the Duke can get us the men and the equipment we need to fight off those blue-skinned bastards, I don't care how he does it. I hear the Duke of Oriflam plans to turn this town into some sort of fortress. Do you think that's a good idea? It's not for me to say. All I know is that unless the Emperor orders me otherwise, his eminence's word is law. Look, no one likes all these taxes and tariffs, but empires don't come for free. Once Sambrek is back on her feet, we'll all reap the benefits. Hmm. Let's see what Philippe makes of all this. Welcome back. Wraiths give you any trouble? None worth mentioning. Captain, do you have a moment? For you? Certainly. Clive, wasn't it? Thank you for last time. How can I help you? I wanted to ask you about the Duke of Oriflam. Do you intend to go along with his plan? But to tell you the truth, I'm in two minds. It's my sworn duty as a captain of the Imperial Army to obey his orders. But I can't say I agree with him. Philippe, I remember you saying that you became a soldier to protect the people you loved. The dame included. That's right. I did. Well, she doesn't agree with the Duke's orders either. She thinks they could tear Northreach apart. And she's probably right. Thank you, Clive. I know what I need to do now. Protecting the people I love is what matters. It doesn't matter how. Well, duty calls, so I better go. Thanks again. It seems Philippe wants to do the right thing at least. I expect Isabel will be pleased to hear that. If nothing else. did you fare? Were you able to speak with the Duke? I was, but... <sighs> so Northreach is to be a fortress after all. Well, 
It will certainly help to hold back the thralls. There's no denying that. Though I doubt it will come as much consolation to the townspeople whose worldly goods are confiscated to pay for it. They deserve to be heard, Clive. To have a say in this new empire the Duke means to build. Sadly, his eminence values their obedience more than their opinions. And hopes to reassert the authority of the state. I fear he sees the people as mere pawns on his chessboard to be sacrificed for the greater good. Needless to say, they themselves are of a different opinion, and would rather their destinies were in your hands. The soldiers, meanwhile, are content to follow their orders. And not just because of the Duke's rank, but because of his vision. I thought as much. Had I sworn to protect Sambrek, I dare say I too would want nothing more than to see it rise from the ashes. Thank you for trying. But the battle is lost. I don't know about that. What happened to your uniform? I handed it in, along with my resignation. Told the lads I wished them well, but that I owe it to those I love to call it a day. But why? Because I realized what really matters to me. Not following some nobleman's orders for the sake of it, but protecting what I care about. Protecting Northreach. I honestly don't know when those monsters will return. But I'm certain they're not finished with us yet. And when they do come back, we need to be ready for them. We need to stand together, all of us. And with you to lead us, my lady, I reckon we can do it. It was you who finally convinced me, Clive. There's no point following orders if they go against everything you believe. Indeed. All of us, standing together. That has always been Northreach's best hope, and one which still lies within our grasp. We have only to turn our attentions to the true enemy. Thank you, Philippe, for showing me what I must do. Anything for you, milady. Speaking of uh, standing together, would you mind if I borrowed a few of the lads from the Vale to help keep watch around the town? I fear his eminence has loftier tasks in mind for the guard. Not at all. Be my guest. Wouldn't be the first time. There may be hope for Northreach yet. Especially with men like you and Philippe to champion our cause. I, for my part, shall continue to work upon the Duke. In the stubborn belief that I might still tempt him into joining hands. But I suspect I shall have to call upon your aid again. Until then, Clive. Until then. Ready, go? Yeah! Aqueduct. No, 
how to find our stone wart. Yote mentioned blood red petals. Enforcements arrive. All right, that should do it. Let's get these back. The stew's awfully thin these days. Himself. We were just about to make a start on that sword, I promised you. It's funny, but none of this would have been possible without your help. You remember Camille? We'll be using his lever work for the grip. The steel, meanwhile, will be tempered in a fire burning the cinders you charmed out of old Zoltan here. And that wet stone from the outer isles? That'll be what gives the blade its edge. And the final flourish will be my talented colleagues engraving. A team effort led by the greatest blacksmith alive. <laughs> now, now, save that talk to the thing's finished, yeah? Right. I'm ready if you are. To the bellows it is, then. The 
sword to end all swords. Ragnarok. It's quite something. I uh, trust you'll take good care of it. Thank you. Both of you. So, does this make you pair the greatest craftsman alive, then? <laughs> this? <laughs> nah. This was just following the footsteps of the greats of old. It'll take more than that to earn us our place in history. But we're up for the challenge. Here. A list of materials. Zoltan and I got talking on the long road back from Dravoist. We reckon with those items there, we could craft something even better than the Ragnarok. That's a weapon I'd like to see. I was hoping. One legend. Good idea. No more. Dr <laughs> I meant to do that then. That it? <clears throat> Fine. Mm, the stew's awfully thin these days. I brought back all the stone and water I could find. Will this be enough? Yes, my lord. Thank you. I'm sure it will serve us until we can find another source. I'm very glad to hear it. You and His Grace are very much alike, you know. You think only of how you might help others. And never of the danger to yourselves. No more than you have, minding my brother. You've risked a lot for him. And I thank you for it. I am honored that you should say so. But I beg you, my lord. Do not give too much of yourself for the sake of others. We could not afford to lose you. I'll keep that in mind. How was she? The Enterprise, I mean. Ah, Sid. Wasn't expecting you back so soon. So, is it good news or bad? Good, thankfully. Here. Ah, that's brilliant! Thanks a blimmin' million! I'll fit into the smelter right away! Present to you the Telemon Furnace. 
Impar, is she? She's a beauty. You saved my beacon again, Sid. And I ain't about to let your good deed go unrewarded. It's it's fine, really. My bag's uh, flexible enough already. Oh, don't say that. I'm sure I can make a few improvements to it yet. You could just buy me a bigger... How about that clasp? Looks a bit stiff. Reckon you could loosen it up and make some more room? And I reckon I know how. With a new alloy we've been working on. The Telemon furnace was just what we needed to perfect it. It's a metal, see? So it's lovely and strong, but it's also, well, stretchy, if you can believe it. Stretchy metal. <laughs> well, if you insist. That is the spirit. You'll love it, I promise. What do you reckon? <laughs> it's actually quite ingenious. Thank you, Owain. Shh, don't mention it. You were, and I wanted to get some practice in using that metal anyway. Can't think of any right now, but maybe one day. Well, hardly. How do you split the sea? Covered in nicks and lumps, the lot of them. It's a wonder they can still walk. Still alive, are you? Going purse weighing you down. It'd better I'll be here. You'll not find a better price than that. It'd better I'll be here. Come again. Should be somewhere nearby. Assuming she's still here. It doesn't still hurt, does it? It's been a pleasure, Doris. Just like old times. I'll give your offer some thought, my lady. How goes the investigation? Sid, what brings you to Martha's Rest? You. I heard you were out here on your own, tracking our slaver. I trust you're being careful. Of course. And it had to be me. The bearers from the Dragon's Airy confirmed a long-held suspicion of mine that the slaver we've been tracking is an old acquaintance. She's no fool. If we'd come in force, she would have spotted us straight away, and then vanished without a trace. That was her just now, wasn't it? So, was it a fruitful reunion? I'd say so. She tried to recruit me. Seems her time in Rosaria is coming to an end. She's abducted bearers from across the region and is looking to smuggle them back into Sambrek. After her brush with those beastmen on the road to Northreach, she hired herself an Imperial escort, which she wants me to join. 
She's dangerous, Sid, but I think I can stop her. Then I'm going with you. I'll take care of the escort. You can see the bearers to safety. Where are they? The Baum Arches, soon to break camp. You go on ahead. I'll follow once I've sent word back to the hideaway. Clive, I was just about to send for you. I'd like you to take something to Sir Wade up in Eastpool. Seeds for planting. Thought it was about time they started growing their own food. I'll keep providing them with whatever they need in the meantime, of course. But if Eastpool's going to survive, it's got to be able to fend for itself. As of those poor bearers. They've lived their whole lives in servitude, but now they're their own masters. Small wonder they ain't got the foggiest out to provide for themselves. So it's up to us to teach them. And if you're wondering why you, well, the wagoneers taking supplies up that way have been coming back with more and more reports of Akashic around the village of late. Sir Wade's putting a brave face on it, but I think even he's starting to worry. And if he's likely to share those concerns with anyone, it's you. Right. Thanks. Wouldn't ask if I didn't have to. There. That should be enough to keep them in Gizal Greens for a few years at least. Gizal Greens? Not the most mouth-watering crop, I'll admit. But they're hardy, they grow fast, and they fill a hole. Better that than something that'll wither away at first frost. And Chocobos love them too, which is no small thing. When I say all of us need to pull together to get Eastpool back on its feet, I mean all of us. They ain't exactly succulent, but cook them right, and they're just about bearable. I'll take your word for it. Anyway, Sir Wade'll know what to do with them. And if he don't, well, I'll go up there and show him myself. I'm sure you will.
They haven't broken camp yet. How did Doris come to know a slaver, I wonder? We've waited long enough. She's not coming. <laughs> Ready the bearers. We're leaving. Back to civilization, is it, Mom? With all haste. Lest any of you lackwits start talking like these feckless bumpkins. I presume your men are ready. We've suffered too many delays as it is. Any more, and I'll be docking your pay. Uh, yes, Mom. Oh, but before you go, it appears we have company. Kill him. You're welcome to try. <laughs> <laughs> So much for your escort. <laughs> You'll forgive me for not avenging my men. I'm not the swordswoman I used to be. I surrender. Do with me as you wish, Sid the Outlaw. Sid! Ah, Doris. I take it you're not here to rescue me from our brooding renegade? You know, I always wondered where you'd vanished to. But casting your lot with this criminal of all people. Better fighting for a cause than killing for coin. I'm sorry, Sid. I should have told you sooner. This woman, my former master, once trained bearer children to be weapons in service of the highest bidder. She raised me like a daughter, and I did terrible things to earn her favor. It wasn't all terrible, surely. We had our fun, too. You were always so eager to learn, and had such clever hands. All my other children took either to the blade or to the books. Always either or. But you... Proved yourself a master of both. That's why I kept you for my own. How about it, my little dagger? Care to swear that blade to me again? I never swore my blade to you, nor will I ever. I fight for a higher cause, to liberate the bearers of this world. Farewell, master. Thank you for making me the weapon I am. You always were a righteous child. Perhaps that's the reason I loved you so. What do you want to do with her? 
I am not the killer she wanted me to be. Not anymore. And she no longer has friends in high places. The dame does, though. Her connections at the Imperial Court will see that justice is done. All right. If you're certain. I am. And thank you. For everything. Now, I'd better let these bearers know that they're safe. And I should head back to the hideaway and put Cole's mind. Welcome back, Sid. Doris's message just arrived. I hear you saved more bearers from being smuggled across the border. With any luck, they'll be joining us in the hideaway shortly. Oh, and Muleta. You don't need to worry about Doris anymore. I'd been hoping as much. She mentioned one or two things in her report. So the slaver we'd been chasing all these months was her former master. <laughs> Wish I'd known. She's been arrested, by the way, over in Sambrek. Went quietly, or... So we're told. She won't be getting off lightly. The Empire may have no love for bearers, but it's none too fond of black market traders either. Can't have been easy for Doris. I'm sure it wasn't. But don't worry. She'll be all right. I hope so. Suppose you should know, eh? You had quite the past yourself before you came here, or so I understand. Anyway, thanks again, Sid. The curse breakers would be lost without Doris. And you, of course. Keep up the good work, Cole. The Guardian say you supposed to. Ah, Lord Rossfield. What brings you to Eastpool? A delivery from Martha. These are Gizal green seats. Martha's keen to cut the apron strings, then, is she? I jest. Of course. You see, I had thought we might be able to revive the old wheat fields, but they'd long since gone to seed, only without the seeds. Martha was hoping you might be able to show the bearers how to plant and tend these, so that they'll be able to fend for themselves. That's not a bad idea. These bearers had only recently escaped their bonds before we brought them here. They know little of freedom of providing for themselves and their loved ones. Unless we teach them how to live like free men, I fear that all we have achieved in bringing them here is to exchange one master for another. Not that myself and the Guardians have been the best example to them so far, subsisting almost entirely on Martha's charity as we do. It's about time we all started to provide for ourselves, bearers and Guardians alike. Unfortunately, We've been a little too busy of late to focus on much besides bolstering our defenses. There have been alarming reports of... The Horde is closing in. They're coming, Sir Wade. All of them. Time it all. I thought... Gather the men in the squad. Yes, Sir Wade. The Horde. A Kashek. We don't... No, you're out. Precisely. What if you could... You mean the bear? Sir Wade. Though they may not be... You're right, my lord. I will appeal to them.
My friends, I humbly beg your aid. We Guardians are few and our enemies many. But I swear we can defeat them with you at our side. You would send us to the slaughter? To serve as bait for those fiends so that you and your men might be spared? And to think we trusted you? Say what you will. The home is not worth dying for. But it is worth fighting for. Sir Wade fights to give you lot a chance. Just like I do. Just like Sid does. We all wanted to give you a home where you could be free. And you got one. Didn't you? This place, East Fool. This is your village, your home. And if you don't fight to protect what's yours, you'll lose it. You know I'm right. This world wants to take everything from you. Everything. Your homes, your freedom, your very lives. So then, are you going to stand by and let that happen to you? Are you going to accept fate like good little Bran did and die having never stood up for yourselves? Or will you fight like free men and women? me a sword. I never dreamt I'd have a home of my own. And now that I have, I don't want to lose it. I will protect what's mine, or die trying. We all will. Free men and women, fighting together. For Eastpool! Thank you, Martha. Don't mention it. Just promise me one thing. That you'll show them how freeborn fight. <laughs> Gladly. Well, if it was numbers you were lacking, you yes. Thanks to you. Me? Lord Rossfield. So what's the... We'll divide off upon... In You're going... I am... I with you... Uh, this, I plead... Ha Sir. Then you know what you must do. We worked... E for work. We've no time... And I will do... I suppose we'd better do our bit too then. Right.
Looks like that's the last of Lord Rossfield! What is it? Owl from the rest. An Akashic curl's been sighted on Rhiannon's right. Or the better half of her. So wait. Hard to say. I could order it. No. Let them finish. You stay here too, Sir Wade. I'll go after the cup. Join me only when... If you're sure. May the founder... Pre Next one's mine. I might know one end of a sword from the other. But I... Run like the wind. With me, Joshua. to his pool. Lord Rossfield, the curl, is it? It's dead. Thank the founder for that. And for you, my lord. We were able to eradicate the rest of the Horde. I have guardians posted around the village to keep watch for further attacks, but all seems quiet for now. I hesitate to say it, but... I think it might be over. I think it might. <sighs> we did it. We saved Eastpool. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. No, Sir Wade. It's us who should be thanking you. You brought us together. Showed us what it means to fight for what you hold dear. We never had nothing to call our own before. We didn't know what it meant to protect it. But now we do. We really do. 
Forgive us, Sir Wade. You and your people saved us, and still we doubted you. But there's no doubt in my mind anymore. We're free men now, so we have to start acting like it. We have to fight to protect what's ours, to protect Eastpool. And we shall. We all shall. Together. This is our home. And if anyone or anything tries to take it away, they'll have us to answer to. Come on, then. Let's get to work. This village isn't going to rebuild itself. They're not slaves anymore. No. They're Rosarians. Your father took... And I believe if he... I believe you might... I shall remain... After all... I think you'll... But you should be proud. I'll have to put... Speak no it. Can we continue? Of course. As wrote... Indeed we... And Clyde, I ain't paid you. All right. Lord Rossfield clearing the gob... <laughs> Since that day, when the odds seemed but every to be a shield, know that whatever... So wait, you have always been... I know that East and Indy... Thank you. I know the rest of... The hero returns. It's lucky you came by when you did, eh? Not only did my seeds get... I just did what I... And it's all... Take it. Thank you, Moth. So, and a hope... Well, it was your... I know that. Though I suppose... You know, bearers know that... I take it. Well, in fact... He showed up at the stables one day, asking... Founder knows what he thought I... Me? I thought he was a new constable. And before I knew it, the cheeky arse was rattling on, told me I got right. And you, and, and you, well, just like you, he certainly, indeed, but the loftier one, which is why, though, suppose you're, and if we'd good thing, it's all, hmm. anyway, better get back the least of, that's it. Lord Rosfield, is there aught the Undying might assist you with this day? Perhaps. Have you learned a little? I see if it does it. All right. I'll go and meet with them. They will be most gratified, I am sure. Might I suggest it? Thank I
You deserve a rest. to rid this place of echoes. that thing is. Should have stayed in the past. These must be Cyril's colleagues. You have our thanks, stranger. Who are you? 
Ah, forgive me, my lord. I did not recognize you. You are Lord Rosfield, are you not? We are archaeologians tasked with surveying this site. When the echoes appeared, our brothers here occupied their attentions. Thanks to them, and to you, we were, for a mercy, able to see our duty to its conclusion. You call that a mercy? Your brothers might still be alive if you put their safety before your duty. Surely this survey wasn't worth dying for. We are charged with uncovering Ultima's origins. A duty of the highest import, as I'm sure you will agree. And you think your dead brothers would agree with you too? I know they would. They gave their lives for the cause, an honor to which all undying aspire. Now, to what do we owe the honor of your presence, Lord Marquis? Cyril told me of your work here, and I agree to collect your findings in his stead. I see. That is most kind. Pray, take them then, with our humble thanks. May the Firebird's flame burn ever in your heart, as it does in ours. It's one thing to lay down your life for another, but for a survey... Forgive them, Clive. You are returned, my lord. I... collected your colleagues' preliminary findings. Here, take them. My thanks. Um, I shall study them. What movie did you watch first? If I discover all did you, that might aid you in your watch Trolls Band Together? Cyril. Your survey party suffered several but losses, to them. Losses which could have been avoided had the others not chosen to complete their work instead of saving their friends. Were these your Dresden orders? Through. No. This was their choice. Every undying devotes his life to the service of the Phoenix. It is our sole duty. And should we die in discharging it, so be it. Even when death is avoidable. Lord, I fear that this is not a point over which it would be fruitful to argue. The undying have served the Phoenix for countless generations, and your opinion of our methods, however earnest, is not like to change them. We live to serve the Phoenix. Our very order exists for that purpose, and that purpose alone. Get that. Cyril, I know that you and your brethren answer only to Joshua. Happy I'll little pig. Word of advice. Happy it little pig. The cause of the Phoenix to have his loyal followers yeah. surrender their lives without yeah. reason. Provide Happy ball, little pig. Escort, that they might live to do their duty yeah. for years to come. Yeah. Bang bang. How you can serve the Phoenix. But how Joshua bang, bang. want you to serve him. Please. Yeah. For our sakes. I thank you for your advice, my lord. <laughs> if you will permit me to respond. Me, piggies. Our faith in his grace, Joshua Rossfield, is absolute. And we of the undying will do what we believe is right to fulfill our duty unto him. As first shield to the Phoenix, I am sure you understand what it means to do one's duty. I do. Then we are of the same mind. And it is my hope.
what did you do? Did you throw your poppy down there? Did you throw your poppy? Did you throw your poppy? Ah, Clive, you'll be pleased to know that the negotiations are progressing well. That is good news. Yes. Our comrade in Randala has just sent word that the contract should be signed very soon. But I still have much and more to prepare. It's a huge undertaking moving this many bearers at once. You couldn't do me a quick favor, could you? time more wild beasts nothing like that i just need you to go over to the caravans and ask el how long we have until the bearers arrive find out exactly how much faster i need to get all these supplies moved all right i'll go and ask thanks clive i owe you one what was that what was that mama Don't blame yourself, El. This is their fault, hey. not yours. I know, but... Hey. Hey. No buts about it, all right? There's something wrong. Ronnie came to give me a message from our intermediary. The talks with the Republican army have fallen through. They've reached an agreement with the Silver Peak Consortium instead. Their prices have Little fallen of late. We deliberately offered above the going rate to try and deter other bidders. But the consortium Little offered double what we did, and the army jumped at the chance. And you had no opportunity to make a counteroffer? None at all. And we were so close. El? What's <laughs> I, I saw Vonnie leaving. She didn't look happy. And with good reason. But I thought we were the only ones the Fist were speaking to about the bearers. How did the Consortium even find out about this? It's not so surprising. They have ears all over the Republic. This isn't over. The Consortium will have to sell these bearers eventually. And at the price they paid, buyers will be few and far between. I'm going to Randalar myself. Alone? You sure that's wise? Are you offering to be my bodyguard? Uh -huh. oh, kind. Meet me at the checkpoint near the capital gates. I'll send an owl ahead and request a meeting. You go to Cashlock, Theo, and get everything ready. We've waited far too long as it is. Even if I fail to free these bearers, there will be others. Someone needs to prepare the place and keep any prowling beasts at bay. Oh, and that's me, is it? Well, it looks like I'm following orders till she gets back from... We're meeting the Silver Peak Consortium. Who've been doing their best to undermine our scheme. She'll never join them after this, surely. No, she said it herself. She still has plans for Cashlock, even if this one falls through. She means to stay with us, then. I can't say I'm not happy to hear it, but... Is this what she really wants? You have to trust her. You're right. It's what she wants now. And if Hell's off fighting for the cause, I should do my part too. So I bid you farewell and safe travels, my friend. I'll gather my men and leave for Cashlock. We'll make sure the place is well stocked and defended. You go to Randala and see if you can stop my sister biting the consortium's heads off. If she won't consider her prospects, someone has to. I'll do my best. All right. To Randala then. Better not keep Eloise waiting. Oh. <sighs> no need 
into Porto when there's nowhere left to go. Stop. Stop trying to get out there. You're a little pig. Ready go? Yeah. Where are you going? I did. We had. It was. I. Who? I mean. Oh. No. My. I'm sorry you weren't able. As am I. He was the stair rep. I fear. Hello. Word from Cap. A pack of the they need. I'll okay. I'll Hold on, Theo. I'm coming. What are you doing? Run like the wind. You gonna hurt yourself. Ambrosia won't help me here. Yeah, she just woke up a couple minutes ago. She fell asleep around like 3.30. Ram. Where are you, Theo? Where is it, Ram?
Are you standing up? I'm trying to get through. She's climbing, squeezing through as much as she can. What thing? I have nothing that's coming here. Nobody's knocking on the door unless they just left it outside. Theodore before that dragon does. You will go get my army. Looks like it's found me. This thing's turned as well. This isn't going to be easy. I uh, put it over. I'll get her. Did you buy it off my top? So why would they have to be new ones?
<laughs> Theodore, you had me worried for... We have to get you out of here. I think it might be a little too late for that. There are or no, there's only so much ether a man can take. And that Drake just wouldn't let me leave. You have my thanks, Sid, for finishing what I could not. For keeping Elle's dream. I'm go get her. Tell her. Shall we go get her? Thank you. That was true. His first instinct was always to. And now he's gone because I. It wasn't. A... He was worried. To live. What exactly? He wants to. We grew up, and I was. I had a late for unlock. My parents had before. Theo, she's better just. I haven't. But I haven't been. I. He was given. You will be. No, you can. You will be. Ainsley, you go fall hurt yourself. I know Theo wanted me. You're going to get stuck. But I'm staying here at the Crimson yeah. Caravans to continue. Oh, yeah. work. We can make a difference here. I need nothing to bring and this. Let me to continue. Thank you. Let's go. You should keep it up until we all say it's going to be stuck. Fucking stuck. Fucking stuck. Fucking stuck. Fucking stuck. Fucking stuck. Fucking stuck. Did you go talk to Daddy? Yeah, she was fun. I think Daddy can take a seat on him. Because he's very clean. Look at him, she's big enough for it, right? Um, yeah. What? Nine months to four years. Yeah.
No, they left. Where'd they go? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, he asked me to take him over, I think to McDonald's or something, but I told him I, um, I had the baby, so I couldn't. Yeah. 